All right, here we go, KL12. Little cleaning video. You need a 12 gauge bore snake, some type of grease. I use this STP all purpose stuff, seems to be working okay. You don't want anything super tacky. A little bit of steel wool, ton of Q-tips. I have about 10 in here, I'll probably use six. Um, some sort of a brush, uh, something that's slightly aggressive. An adjustable wrench, a pick with, you can either use one of these 90 degree ones or there's some that have like a 45, like some of the metal ones that are just as good. This is like a, um, a handle with a quarter inch extension attached to it. And then another little baby quarter inch extension attached to it. Um, you need something like this that you can get. I know there's like a welding supply that you can use in place of this. It's probably better. Um, but this is probably, I don't know, an inch diameter and fits inside your chamber really, really well. Probably some Angel's Envy. And if it's one of those days, which it is, a beer as well. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to crack this thing open. Take our recoil assembly, push it forward, slowly let it out, set that aside. We're gonna take our bolt, bring it straight back, and it comes up and out. So that's our bolt and our op rod and all of our goodies there. What I like to do, and this is kind of up to you, but I like to drop the hammer at this point because you can uh, apparently do some damage to some of these internals in here and it's just, I don't know, good form. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get all of this old um, lubricant out of there, all this old grease and some of the grime in there. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. You can see that it's kind of gross and nasty in there. We get the top of the rails, the side of the rails, and the rail actually meet the receiver. It's another spot that you want to make sure you address and get some of that grit and grime out. Probably should have said that I have a roll of paper towels right here as well. If you're shooting some side of sh some type of shells that are a little more dirty, like this gun's only had double A's through it for a long time. Um, if you're shooting something a little bit more dirty, then it wouldn't be a horrible idea to get some air and kind of blow inside here and get some of the grime out of there because you'll for sure have all types of stuff going on in there that you don't really experience when you buy super good shells. So that looks pretty good. Most of that where I want it. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to get this brush. Like I said, there's a couple different options for this one, but this is the kind of weird tweaker setup I have going. You want to go in there about far enough to really get where that shell is going to get in there and some of those plastic deposits are going to get stuck kind of rotate it around a little bit. Something like that. Now here's where it gets a little interesting. So if you're, if you're shooting your gun a lot and you're shooting, like I said before, like decent ammo through it, 
or good ammo through, I should say. You probably don't have to worry about getting into your gas system, um, but this gun has probably two, maybe 300 rounds on it. I shot a couple matches. So I'm gonna take this out and kind of have a look inside there and see what I need to do. So I'm gonna take my adjustable wrench. I'm gonna put it right here on this, this little spot right there. Pinch down on that guy. I'm gonna rotate this up. You'll know you're good. You'll know you're good when you can see that your your gas tube can freely move. When when you're moving this guy, it kind of blocks it in there. So if you look at it from up top, you can see where it's at a good spot. This guy comes out. Pinky goes in, extracts your puck. And that'll give you a pretty good idea of what's going on in there. If you're shooting good ammo, it shouldn't be too bad. It should just be regular maintenance. I just take it and brush it out. Try to get most of that shit out of there. Sometimes it gets pretty caked in there. And you might have to take your knife and kind of get in here, scrape it a little bit. This one's not too bad, so I'm not too worried about it. Get the top. Then we want to get inside of this gas block. And the, the best thing to do is to really get, when you're learning especially, is to get a flashlight in there and have a look to see what's happening here. So a lot of times deposits will happen inside right here on this front surface, obviously inside here. And they can, when they break off, they can break off and clog your actual gas ports. So I know this one feels really good. I can feel the back and there's not a whole lot going on. I'm just going to, for shits and giggles, get in here. And all I'm doing is I'm taking this tip and I'm putting it inside these gas ports and just making sure there's they're free of any obstruction or any buildup. I, I would imagine that the first couple times you do this, you probably wanna see what's going on so you can see what where those gas tubes are, or where those gas ports are. Um, I've done this more than a couple times, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. Get it to a point I like it. There's another spot where you could blow some air into there. Um, there's not a whole lot of buildup that I have in there. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna kind of work it in there a little bit. Um, if it's super gnarly, that's where the steel wool comes in. You can see I have a little, little piece that's kind of put together for that. And all you're gonna do is just kind of spin it around. And once you start doing stuff like this and you start agitating inside of this gas block, it's probably a good idea to blow it out with air. So get your compressor out and blow that shit out. Um, from here, I'm gonna open this guy up. I'm gonna take my, um, my boar snake. I'm gonna put this in here. It's just going straight through. The weight goes all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna pull it through a couple times. Probably not gonna be able to see it very well on the camera, but you get the idea.
Alright, that guy's in a pretty good spot. Next thing we'll, uh, we'll address this guy. So this lug right here travels in this little channel inside the, uh, the bolt carrier and off-rod assembly. So we're gonna rotate it out so that it can come out. And we can bring it right out. You'll see this guy, there's all kinds of old stuff in there. So you get a paper towel and some Q-tips and address that. Get all that old stuff out of there. The grease on this one looks pretty good, but it does have a little bit of buildup and some a little bit of brass in there and all kinds of gunk. So I'm gonna get all that out. I try my best to keep all this grease and all the shit off of this charging handle, but sometimes it happens and put some on there and get that shit off. Damn, so that's a good Q-tip from the crib. I don't know how that got in there. I'd be in big trouble if Joy saw it. I'm gonna pull that guy out, get inside these rails. This is where it's uh, traveling on the rails of your actual receiver. Clean all that out. Clean out a little bit in here. Pretty legit there. All right, next we're gonna take that same assembly. We're gonna go to the front of the off rod. Where there's a bunch of carbon that's kind of built up on here. So we're gonna get all that shit off. This is another one where if you're shooting shitty ammo. It's gonna build up. Mainly where it's uh, making contact with the puck, which is right here. So we're gonna scrape some of that shit off. I don't have a whole lot on this gun, but I've shot different ammo and I've seen it built up quite a bit, but I haven't done it in a while and for shits and gigs, we'll give it a go. And keep that shit out of your bourbon. Make sure you put your cocktail and drink somewhere out of the way. Go fuck if it goes in the grease. All right, that guy's in a good spot. Next, we'll take this bolt. Same thing. It's nasty. Um, this guy's getting the brunt of most of the dirt and grime and shit at the breach. So, let me get all that out of there. It's going to be a combination of paper towel and Q-tips. This is where it's actually that bolt riding on the rails is right here and right here. Just wanna make sure we pay a little bit of special attention right there. Get all that out. So we're at a good spot, we address this. Got the bore snake through here. Gas tube, so it's probably overkill and probably silly, but I like to take my bore snake and pull it through my gas tube. 
probably just a silly superstitious thing where I have very, very, very minimal problems with my gun. So do the same thing again and again and again and get the same results, right? Pull this guy through there, probably just once. Um, the springs, I mean, I think these are both like 18, 17 or 18 pound 1911 recoil springs that are actually in here. Um, if they're grimy, then I would address it. You would just take your paper towel, take these things out, take your paper towel, wipe them all down, and then re-grease them or oil them actually. Um, with I use FP10 and I don't know, I haven't, I haven't tried. I've got some of this Radco Lube CLP stuff. I haven't tried it yet on anything, but it looks like it's a pretty promising lightweight oil too. But I'm not worried about this. So that's that. Um, we'll go back and put our gas assembly back together. So our puck's going back in here. Nice and free moving. Gas tubes going back in. There's a, there's a little indentation in the receiver right there where this little lever is gonna go into. So you'll feel it when you get in there. And I'll lock your gas tube back in. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of, little bit of grease in here inside this little channel. I apply it with a Q-tip, there's probably different ways. You get a little bit here. I'm gonna get both sides of the rail. A little on this side. A little on this side. And I'm pretty, pretty liberal with grease. Um, a lot of people are, when they open, when they look at inside of my gun, whether they look through here or I'm taking it apart for some reason, which is not very often, but it has happened. Um, some people tell me that, oh man, use so much grease, but oh man, I don't have any issues with my gun. So I guess it is what it is. I'm gonna grab our bolt. This is the surface where it's running over the hammer. We're gonna hit that a little bit and then we're gonna hit it inside these rails where it's running inside your receiver, inside your gun. Get those guys nice and lubed. Maybe hit this lug a little bit, hit this lug a little bit, and we're pretty good. So when this goes back in your gun, you go back in there. You'll know you're good when this surface right here, so this thing kind of rotates in here, you want to make sure that this, this surface right here is all lined up. So like I said, that's where it's running across the rails inside your gun. Um, so make sure that's, that's level or that's uh, parallel, those two. And then this surface needs to go straight down into your receiver. So I guess it's probably a good point to <laughs> grease the inside of my receiver. So I'm gonna do the, basically apply the same grease we took off when we first started. Kind of paint this shit on. And this is one of those things where I err on the side of more than less grease. A little bit on top of the hammer. That looks pretty good. So from here, like I said, that guy needs to be basically at 12 o'clock. 
are at six o'clock. All part goes in first. As soon as this part of the bolt carrier clears the, the back of the receiver where it actually dips down, that's where you want to push down. You're going to go straight in. And take our recoil assembly. Put it back in. And the last thing we're going to do is wipe off some of this excess grease. This goes down. Check a little bit, make sure that that should feel super smooth. Hammer's working good. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna lock it back. And I wanna hear that puck move back and forth nice and freely. If that puck's moving nice and freely back and forth when the bolt's locked back, that's a good indicator that you could probably do away with taking the gas assembly out, cleaning all this out. Um, but like I said, I've had a major match and a, a local club match on this gun and I got another one coming up on Sunday in a couple days. So it's a good one, but it feels good. Nice and smooth. Um, I would go a little bit above and beyond and, and exercise this action. Um, I don't know, I guess a number 20, maybe 30 sounds good to me as far as how many times you're, you're exercising it to make sure you're spreading that grease into all the little pockets and uh, should be good to go.